Well, we've made it to day three of this six part series where I'm bringing you a different fragrance every day this week from Captain Fawcett, who are a very cool and quirky brand based here in the UK that specialise in male grooming products that are widely uh, appreciated by moustache and beard donning hipsters. Today's scent goes by the name of Triumphant and it was created in col uh, collaboration with British actor and comedian Rufus Hound, who claims the fragrance was inspired by the the uh, stimulation of his olfactory senses whilst whizzing round the green and pleasant English countryside on his motorcycle wearing an open faced helmet. So to find out all about this one and whether it's any good or not, stay tuned to this episode of Mags Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to this latest episode of Mags Frags, where it's the fragrance that's the star of the show. My name's Paul and today's scent of the day is Triumphant by Rufus Hound, which is a, a fougere fragrance for men and it comes in a, an EDP concentration uh, and it was first launched back in 2019. It comes in a 50ml bottle size priced at £68, but they also produce other products with the same scent DNA including moustache wax, beard balm and beard oil, which there's currently 20% off the entire range at the moment. So now might be uh, a pretty good time to pick up a bottle if you uh, think it sounds pretty good and uh, one that you might enjoy this springtime. Okay, so into the presentation, and as always, the box arrives in the familiar vintage style brown cardboard design and features a, a green sticker that runs around the side containing the name of the fragrance. There's also the name printed on the front as well as the Captain Fawcett logo, as well as the size and concentration. At the top is the same info printed again, and around the back is a, a brief overview about what to expect from the scent itself. And finally, at the bottom, there's the barcode, which is uh, displaying a very fine looking muzzy. The inlay box inside this time gets a, a bit of a springtime pattern design, with it featuring some swallows and some flowers and some greenery. But unlike the ones that I've already spoken about, this doesn't have a, a short story that's printed on the inside and it's just patterned all the way through. But you do get this uh, like monotone uh, pattern design on the outside and on the inside you get a, a full colour version on it. But like I say, there's no story about this particular one. The bottle design is definitely inspired by classic motorbikes and the logo is a, like a hybrid of the Triumph and the Harley Davidson logos and the cap is also shaped like a cog or a sprocket from the engine of a, of a motorbike. It's in a lovely translucent British racing green colour and I think it looks pretty cool but what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. The cap is a slide on cap and like the others that I've already mentioned doesn't click into place that firmly uh, but it does fit a little bit more securely than the others that I've tested but still never try to handle it by the cap otherwise you'll definitely end up with a, a triumphant smelling floor. The atomizers uh, in these uh, have all been pretty decent quality and again I think the presentation overall on this one is uh, pretty decent. Okay, so into the note breakdown, and the top notes in this one are bergamot, lime, and ylang ylang. In the heart, we've got blackcurrant, clove, and galbanum. And the base notes in this one are sandalwood, ambergris, and musk. Yeah, the opening of this one has the complete wow factor. And the first time I sprayed it, it really caught me off guard and I thought I'd been smacked in the face by a conifer tree or something. Uh, I honestly can't think off the top of my head of any fragrance that I own that comes close to smelling more fresh and green than this one does straight off the top. The combination of the sour zesty citrus notes of bergamot and lime blending together with the slightly bitter green aroma of the galbanum are just instantly super bright and effervescent and honestly the uh, first minute or so of this one does take your breath away. You do also get some uh, mild spiciness from the clove but it's the, that green freshness that really instantly grabs your attention. 
as it dries down that super zesty introduction does die down a little bit and then the ylang ylang and the black currants start to come through and bring with them a, a tiny bit of fruity floral sweetness which does soften it a bit and just rounds off all the edges uh, but for the most part this is a super bright clean green fougere uh, with, a, with a really nice kind of um, straight out of the shower soapiness but also a touch of bitterness which keeps it smelling really cool crisp and kind of outdoorsy but later on when all the big hitting uh, notes start to fade away after maybe a couple of hours or so you're left with more of a soft musky base with a, a bit of saltiness from the ambergris and some uh, mild silky sandalwood This one is the perfect spring and early summer scent, we're either dressed up or casually. It's ultra versatile and would make a, a perfect scent to complement a, a sharp suit for either a business meeting or an interview, or just a, a spray and go dumb reach kind of scent if you're heading out on a warm sunny day wearing a, a jeans and a, a nice white t-shirt. I do think that some younger guys might find this uh, a little bit too retro smelling which you'll always find with fougere fragrances in general anyway uh, but I reckon this would be great on younger guys who are just looking for something that little bit different and, uh, and edgy however for guys maybe 40 years and upwards this is a masculine gentleman's classic that will certainly uh, take you on a journey down memory lane and remind you of that super clean fresh old school aftershave experience back in the day and I, uh, I think that guys of a certain age will absolutely love this one Yeah, in terms of its performance, you'll get a, an hour of massive projection, followed by an hour of decent projection, and then on me, it seems to appear to fade fairly quickly. And the other day, I sprayed it on my denim jacket that I was wearing, and after a couple of hours, I, I seemed to stop detecting it. But then uh, I took the jacket off in the evening to uh, have a few games of snooker with my mate, and after about a further four, four or five hours, I picked up the jacket to put it back on, and I got an absolutely massive massive waft of the fragrance so it's obviously performing and it's just probably me that just gets used to the scent DNA uh, and it's just after a certain point that I kind of uh, lose connection with it uh, but it's definitely not a weak performer but as it's uh, proved that night it will certainly stick around on clothes and fabric for at least six to seven hours and people won't fail to notice it on you especially in those first couple of hours where it's got one of the uh, biggest bursts of green freshness that I think I've uh, ever experienced This one is a reimagined take on the classic gentleman's green barbershop fougere, which does produce a traditional retro kind of aroma, but it's certainly not old fashioned. And in my opinion, it has uh, got its own unique identity and I don't really have anything in my collection uh, that it instantly reminds me of. So definitely not a, a generic smelling scent. I think that anyone who enjoys barbershop type fragrances will absolutely love it. It's a really uplifting, happy kind of scent that just makes you think of sunny days and it's absolutely perfect to wear outdoors in the springtime. I would highly recommend that you at least try it out for yourselves and you can pick up a 2ml carded sample from the Captain Fawcett web, uh, website for £2.75 or alternatively you can pick up all six uh, of these fragrances in the collection for 13 quid. and who knows you might even just uh, discover your next signature scent. Okay, so that's about it for uh, part three, but don't forget coming up in tomorrow's episode, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on this one, which uh, goes by the name of Booze and Backy uh, from the Ricky Hall Signature Series. So if the name of the scent has pricked your attention, then uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow night at around about 7pm to find out all about it and what my uh, initial experiences are with it so far. And as always guys, if you've got any value from the video and you found it useful in any way, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. It's also great to hear your opinions, your thoughts, your critiques on all of the fragrances that feature in these reviews, so don't forget to keep your comments coming down in that comments section. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in to this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you tomorrow for part number four. Bye bye for now.